Hey guys, welcome to another exciting video. Today we are going to see how you can authenticate your Salesforce org in your VS Code. Now, once you authenticate, you can basically run your anonymous Apex, your any Apex code. Uh, you can even run Sockers and you can even run your test classes. You can execute your test cl cl classes, your test methods as well. So everything that you can do in your developer console, you can do all of these things in your VS Code as well. So let's get started. So to authenticate your Salesforce org, you need to install some, uh, you install a few things. For example, this Salesforce CLI. So I'm going to put all the links in the description below. Uh, so you can use uh, all these links and download it. So you can download this Salesforce CLI. And after downloading this, you have to install some a VS code extension. So first is Salesforce CLI integration. I'm going to put all the links or the keywords in the description. So you can just type it and just install it. So we have the Salesforce extension pack again. This is the second thing. It will install a bunch of all these extensions again. And once you do that, you have uh, to create a project. Okay. So here right now I'm going to go um, to command palette. So to open the command palette, you have to press control shift P. Okay. Once you do that, you just type create uh, it will show you this option SFDX create project with manifest. So I'm going to select this right now. And here you have an option to choose standard empty or analytics. So I'm going to go with standard because we'll need some uh, dependent files that I'm going to show you later. So once I select the standard, it will, it will ask me the project name. So I'm just going to select test one, for example, here. And uh, again, I have to give the directory. So I'm just going to select uh, one of my directories here. I'm going to click this create project. So once I do create project, you will see I have all these uh, files here. The most important file here that we are going to use is hello apex. This is what is going to run all our, uh, you know, anonymous code. Again, we have this package on XML. This is going to retrieve all the apex classes. Let's say you want to retrieve some test class. You want to retrieve some uh, apex classes or a component <coughs> LWC, anything you can retrieve all of these things. Even you can run your sockels as well. So let's see if I, uh, so before executing all these things, you have to authenticate your orgs. Right now we just created one project in your local repository. Okay. Local, uh, locally we have created this thing. So if I, uh, uh, so once all these things are done, you have to load your extensions. So, okay. It's going to take some time to load the extensions. Right now, there should be an option here in the bottom to authenticate your org. Okay. So you can see here once uh, now all the extensions are loaded in the bottom, you can see no default org set. So this is where the magic happens basically from this is where you have to authenticate. So once I click on this no default org set, it's going to activate the extension again. Now this is just the first time you have to do. Okay. You don't have to do this like every single time. You just create one project and then you just need to authenticate. So here I have this option called authorize an org. And once I click this authorize an org, you have to choose a production sandbox or even custom URL. So whatever your sandbox is based on, if it is a test uh, sandbox, if it is production, you can basically authenticate anything. So right now I'm just going to go with the production because I have some orgs which are on my trailhead and they use this login.salesforce.com or you can do anything basically. You can choose your custom URL as well. So I'm going to go with the production. You, if you have your sandbox on taste.salesforce.com, so use this second option here. Okay. Now I'm going to give this uh, as test one only, and you just need to give the alias. Now you can see I have some uh, commands here. So these are the commands that you can even run to authenticate your org. But right now, once I hit this button, uh, hit this command uh, in my uh, command palette, it will open this uh, page. Okay. Now here you have to log into your salesforce.com. So I'm just going to log in into my, one of my sandboxes. So once I log in, okay, once I log in, this will basically authenticate my uh, VS code. So you can see my uh, org, which is basically a uh, test one. I gave an alias. So that is authenticated right now. Okay. So I can basically do anything now. Let's say there is this hello apex. I can run this apex uh, code here. Let's say let's query uh, some accounts maybe. Okay. So I'm just going to write a list of accounts here. Okay. Account is equals to, um, select id um, name from account here okay and i'm just gonna see how many accounts i have so i'm just gonna write system dot debug and uh, here i'm just gonna type uh, account dot uh, size or uh, i think size is the one method right 
so let's see if we can now when you run this anonymous apex code yeah you have actually you can save these files or without even saving you can basically get this okay so right now i have saved this if i don't save it i have this option to select all these codes so you can basically select a particular line and you can execute that particular line only but here i'm just gonna you know save this i'm gonna go to command palette control shift p and here i have this option execute animus apex with editor contains so if i select this okay it's gonna give me some a debug statement now if i go here okay now here you can see on line number nine i have here debug statement and user debug basically it's 25 i can you know do it better actually the way i do account list size if i type this like this okay i can just clear this output again and i can just go Control shift p i can execute this again and you can see my debug statement account list size is 25 so there are total 25 accounts right now i have in my test one so you know what let's create uh an account here so it will, it's gonna give me uh so basically whatever you do in your developer console uh you can do all of these things in your vs code as well so usually we open this uh execute animus window okay here we type our epic code and we can basically run the same thing you can do here as well about sql as well we also run some sql right so we have this query editor here the same thing that we do in this query editor you can basically run from here as well so here i have this execute query with currently selected test so it there are few commands here again i just gonna i'm just gonna select this then Control shift p execute sql query with currently selected test uh, text so i just need to select this use this rest api here and once you do this okay it's gonna give you all the accounts right now so these are all the accounts i have so that's how you you basically use this uh, thing you even you can create your apex classes lwc components and even test classes as well now another thing that i want to show you guys is how you can retrieve your uh, apex classes using this package or xml not just apex classes but anything aura component there are plenty of things even trigger static resources lwc as well so i have this uh, contact search apex class here in my org and i want to make some changes so first i have to retrieve this so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go into my package or xml i have this uh you know type as apex class i have pasted my exact apex class name you can have multiple apex classes so i can just you know you just need to create multiple members here and, and put the correct name there now i don't need my uh, apex page or triggers or lwc components here so i'm just gonna comment this things or even i can delete this as well but right now i'm just gonna comment it so i can use it later so i have uh, saved this uh, package xml file with required data that i want to retrieve so i'm just gonna uh, click on this right click on this file right click retrieve source in manifest or, or you can right click here as well okay so i'm gonna right click on this and retrieve source in manifest from org so once i do this okay it's gonna basically show if it is success or failure right now it is success because it retrieved the uh, apex class here so i can just go into this force app and here i have these classes inside this you can see i have this apex class so let's say i uh you know i, I make some changes let's say i add some system dot debug statement here and uh, I, I just want to see you know how many uh, again same thing i want to see how many contacts i have retrieved from my query here okay so list of uh, contact or or let's say size of contact so i'm just gonna make some changes again i'm gonna put this variable dot size and that's it now i made this change and i want to deploy this change will not be present on my sandbox here okay so i have to deploy this class so there is option deploy the source to org so once i click this okay it's going to deploy this changes to the org here so if i open this again okay you can see my new uh debug statement is added here the same way you can create your apex class as well i can just go here and create apex class you can see this option here i can give uh test class or whatever the name you want to give you can select your uh, directory here as well so this is going to create your class and you can even same you can deploy this class to the org again even you can run the test classes so i'm going to create another video to uh, focus more on test classes or what you can do through this vs code this video was just to show you guys what you can do with this 
uh, you know, how you can authenticate and what basic things you can do. The most important thing that I usually in my daily life is this Hello Apex uh, or the Apex script. You can even duplicate this. You can just open this in File Explorer. You can just copy and paste this again and you can just create, uh, let's say, utility uh, file or anything. So you can have multiple Apex scripts here and you can just modify this according to your needs. So that's it guys for today. I'm going to see you guys in the next video.